Thanks to our viewers on Twitch, by the way. And we are streaming live right now. It's twitch.tv slash smashamash. It is my favorite mobile streaming platform. It's very convenient and very well designed. It's why we like to stream there. And if you're wondering why we stream live to Twitch and put a lot of daily space weather videos on Twitch, the reason is, folks, is because I'm not only smash mash but I'm also a client. And so after I create these videos, I watch them on a larger screen. I'm also the editor at large. So if I make a boo-boo, I have to correct that in the comments section or even sometimes make a whole nother video retracting or correcting what I'd said. Retracto the smash o alpaca. Retracto. We're not going to defraud our viewers. If you enjoy the content on YouTube, don't forget to press like and subscribe. Thanks to our new subscribers as well as our loyal pals who expected to even reach 100 subscribers. I certainly didn't. As again, we started making the videos because we were we saw a niche. We realized that nobody else was covering the correct data sets or producing the videos in a way that is consistent with reality. And so here we are a few years in. We're also on BitChute thanks to our BitChute subscribers as well. And let's do a cosmology segment. Today's cosmology segment should be pretty interesting as it should feature some stories here at the Smash News Network, least busted name in news, that should interest all kinds of viewers. Friends, foes, science noobs, science pros, even your neutrals might be interested in this. How about tidal tales on the Hyades cluster, which is located only 153 light years away, by the way. A huge cluster of stars appears to be being pulled apart by tidal forces, yes. Forces caused by the orbit. Things like gravity and inertia cause tidal forces. And there's a diagram of the Hyades cluster. And you can see the way there's this expansion out of two ends, forming a line, actually, of stars there. And this is probably all over the science wire. This title is Tantalizing Evidence. Is the nearest star cluster to the sun being destroyed? I'm going to let the article scroll. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm going to let the article scroll so you can read it. This one is credited to SciTech Daily. So an interesting article here about the tidal tales of the closest star cluster to the sun, the Hyades. And here's a small portion of the video. And it's not going to let us go full screen, but we'll show you the segment of the sky that it's in. It is located in the constellation Taurus. So in any case, folks, don't worship the golden calf. No eating of babies will be permitted. And here's another good animation here, folks. Uh, I'm going to move this back. Again, the articles on SciTech Daily go have a look. And this is the this is the estimation of what was going on 650 million years ago and so on. And I'll scroll the rest of the article here. Feel free to pause. We'll be here when you get back. It's the beauty the beauty of video on demand. Now we're going to pick a random number between 1 and 1031. Oh, we want one number. And something's wrong with our quantum number generator, folks. Let's see if it works. I apologize. Today's number is 757. Let's take a look at what number 757 is on the Neil Gorel Swift Bat X-ray Observatory. 757. Is there anything really random in space, folks? Today's is GX5-1, entry number 757, a low-mass X-ray binary slash neutron star. We'll call it a massive radio source. And check out the X-ray variability of this thing. 
there's the historic graph going all the way back 16 years to 2005. And majorly variable there. You can see even on a daily basis this upper left pane. Here's a 30-day chart. Let's take a look at it if we can see anything. GX5-1, otherwise known as 4U1758-25. There it is on Sinbad. And we'll look at it in a few other wavelengths here real quick. Here it is on Panstars. Interesting, interesting. Here it is on the two mass, the infrared light. By the way, Panstars is some bands of visual, optical light. So there it is on the two mass in infrared. And let's take a look at it on Chandra. Chandra, it may be interesting. Actually, let's take a look at Swift Bat Flux first. There it is on the Swift Bat Flux, the Burst Alert Telescope. Here's the XMM Newton, the Multi Mirror Project. And here it is on Chandra, I think. Great view of it there in Chandra. I would also note the way the X is well off of this dark region here. So there's a region that lacks X-rays, and the crosshair is on this. An interesting object to say the least. Highly variable low mass X-ray binary slash massive radio source known as known to some as a neutron star, GX5-1. And let's talk about Hoinga. Hoinga. Check it out, folks. It's it's quite spectacular. It's the Hoinga Supernoval Remnant, as it's entitled. You're looking at it in a few different uh, frequencies here. This is, I believe, radio and X-ray composite imagery. So this is going to actually go into our forum shortly. The Hoinga Surprise, an unexpected supernova discovered near the galactic plane of the Milky Way galaxy. And this one is very large. And there you can see an example of how big it is. Um, again, I'm going to let the article scroll here. Uh, this is important in that it is the brightest X-ray source in certain bands. So I don't want to spend too much time on it, folks. This is integrated into the Daily Space Weather video. But we're going to have to update smashomash.com slash forum as a result of this one because we're keeping a catalog of certain objects. And I don't know why we're on COVID-19, but let's talk about our mission. And if you want to read the rest of our mission, head to smashomash.com slash forum slash mission. Number five is to publish scientific papers in a multidisciplinary manner, including but not limited to science such as spectroscopy, chemistry, astrophysics, health, wellness, longevity, cosmology, biology, and more. And so I just wanted to let our viewers know that I'll be explaining the mechanism behind the solar sunspot cycles, a problem with the current measurements of the most relevant solar data, as well as possibly a third one about cosmology. So I don't want to reveal too much in the Daily Space Weather video about this because I don't want my idea to get stolen, actually several ideas to get stolen. And if you haven't checked out smashomash.com slash forum yet, the official forum of the Smash News Network, least busted name in news, head to smashomash.com slash forum. And we're talking today about the Cosmology Forum. So the Cosmology Forum, and thanks for posting uh, on the Cosmology Forum, Terry. Terry Shepard, thanks for posting Space Distance. But today we're going to be talking about the most as we have a forum specifically about the most in space, whether it's the largest object in the solar system or the largest planet in the solar system or the strongest radio source in the sky besides the sun, Cygnus A. We've got a whole multi-page list here, and we'll be updating this to include the strongest specific band X-ray source known as the Hoinga. So that will be appearing soon. Check out our other forum topics as well. We've got forums on, uh, what do you call it? Earth and geophysics, 
Geo Earth and geophysics? Is that what we called it? Geophysics. Yeah, Earth slash geophysics. There's a free-for-all. There's a general science forum. There's one on our content, which is barely even populated. Again, smashamash.com slash forum. And if you want to read about the mission, smashamash.com slash forum slash mission. One of our missions is indeed cosmology. Here at the Smash News Network, least busted name in news, we're concerned about cosmology because of the implications to your daily life, especially. And that's today's cosmology segment. Let's continue on with some data about things like electrons. <laughs> 